Hey guys, welcome back to Rapture Alerts. My name is Sean. If you're just tuning in, this is just a guy talking about Jesus. That's all I do over here. Guys, I hope you're having a great Saturday. I've been up for a few hours now. I just happened to wake up about five o'clock in the morning and started praying and had some coffee, had a, a breakfast sandwich and just started studying, getting notes together and things like that. I really couldn't turn my brain off. There's a ton of stuff on the news and different current events happening, a lot of birth pains. Did you know I had an earthquake 90 miles off the coast of my state? There was an earthquake near Florida. Yeah, that's a couple of hours away from me. So, guys, I mean, did you know that Malibu had an earthquake and then Hawaii had an earthquake? You know, see, so couple that with the El Nino that just pushed through and the volcano in Iceland, all the anarchy, all the chaos. Nation is definitely rising against nation and kingdom against kingdom. We have covered that, but... Let's stay on track. Let's do Job 4 out here. We'll open up with prayer, and then we'll do a little screen share, and then we'll go ahead and get the video uploaded. Guys, I appreciate you so much taking the time to stop by and watch these videos and worship with me. Make sure you share the gospel with someone today that Jesus Christ died for their sins and came back to life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6 is the only way to heaven. Make sure that you tell somebody that today, that if they believe in Jesus and believe that gospel, and invite them into their heart to be their personal Lord and Savior. Their name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life, but they have to believe that story, that he died on the cross and he came back to life. Go and tell somebody that today. It'll help them, it'll lift your spirits up, and you'll be doing work for the kingdom. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for dying for me on the cross when I'm not worthy. Thank you for paying the ultimate price for me. Thank you for cleaning me up, Father, and giving me this channel and allowing me to do work for the kingdom and try to lead others to you. Father, I ask that you bless this day and anybody watching this video, that they be free from their sickness and their disease and their pain and their turmoil today, their mental anguish. I pray that you take away the diabetes, the PTSD, the back pain, the neck pain, the insomnia, the muscular dystrophy, Father, I pray that you take all of these things away, the chronic pain, the restlessness, the fear, the worry. I pray that you crush and dissolve all of it today, Father, with your presence, and that you speak peace be still in everybody's life watching this video, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I love and miss you. Amen. All right, guys, we're going to be moving inside for Job chapter 4. It's just a little too loud outside. I want the audio to be as good as it can. So let's take a look at it right here and read together. Job chapter 4 says, Then Eliphaz the Tenemite responded, If one ventures a word with you, will you become impatient? But who can refrain from speaking? Behold, you have taught many, and you have strengthened weak hands. Your words have helped the stumbling to stand, and you have strengthened feeble knees. But now it comes to you, and you are impatient. It touches you, and you are horrified. Is your fear of God not your confidence, and the integrity of your ways your hope? Remember now whoever perished being innocent, or where were the upright destroyed? According to what I have seen, those who plow wrongdoing and those who sow trouble harvest it. Job's friends have shown up to help him and comfort him, but they haven't talked for seven days or seven nights. And now his friend is speaking up and he's he, well, basically what he's saying is he thinks all of these terrible things Job is going through is because he has done wrong. He doesn't really understand what's going on. And those who sow trouble harvest it. By the breath of God they perish, and by the blast of his anger they come to an end. The roaring of the lion and the voice of the fierce lion and the teeth of the young lions are broken out. The lion perishes for lack of prey, and the cubs of the lioness are scattered. Now a word was brought to me secretly, and my ear received a whisper of it, amid disquieting thoughts from visions of the night, when deep sleep falls on people. Dread came upon me in trembling, and made all my bones shake. Then a spirit passed by my face, the hair of my flesh stood up. Something was standing still, but I could not recognize its appearance. A form was before my eyes. There was silence. Then I heard a voice. Can mankind be righteous before God? Can a man be pure before his Maker? He puts no trust even in his servants, and he accuses his angels of error. How much more those who live in houses of clay! whose foundation is in the dust, who are crushed before the moth. Before morning and evening they are broken in pieces. Unregarded they perish forever. Is their tent cord not pulled out within them? They die yet without wisdom.
All right, guys, there you go. Job chapter four is a little bit shorter than most. Let me go ahead and head back outside and let's see if we can get the commentary done out there, okay? Eliphaz. Eliphaz's first speech. See chapters 15 and 22 for Eliphaz's other speeches. He spoke profoundly and gently, but knew nothing of the scene in heaven that had produced the suffering of Job. Job's friend finally spoke after seven days of silence and began kindly acknowledging that Job was recognized for being a wise man. Unfortunately, with the opening of their mouths for the first speech, all the wisdom of their silence departed. Whoever perished being innocent. Eliphaz recognized Job's fear of God and integrity, was likely encouraging Job at the outset by saying he wouldn't die because he was innocent of any deadly iniquity but must be guilty of some serious sin because he was reaping such anger from God. This was a moral universe and moral order was at work, he thought. He had oversimplified God's pattern of retribution. The simple axiom, the righteous will prosper and the wicked will suffer, does not always hold up in human experience. It is true that plowing and sowing iniquity reap judgment, so Eliphaz was partially right. But not everything we reap in life is the result of something we have sown. Eliphaz was replacing theology with simplistic logic to say that wherever there is suffering, it is the result of sowing sin is wrong. Wanting to demonstrate that wicked men experience calamities in spite of their strength and resources, Eliphaz illustrated his point by the destruction that comes on lions in spite of their prowess. Five Hebrew words were used here for lion, emphasizing the various characters of wicked people, all of whom can be broken and perish. A word was brought to me stealthily. Eliphaz spoke of a mysterious messenger in a vision, eerie fantasy or a dream. He claimed to have divine revelation to bolster his viewpoint. Here is the conclusion of Eliphaz's revelation that Job suffered because he was not holy enough, not righteous enough. This is the content of the message which is in effect that God judges sin and sinners among men as houses of clay, as he did among angels. And that's the end of Job chapter 4 commentary. Alright guys, what do you think about that? I got another chapter of Job done. Look how the friends have shown up with all these terrible things happening. And they haven't said anything for seven days or seven nights, but now that one of the friends is speaking, look what he's saying. He doesn't understand. I mean, there's not much coming out. Job understands what's going on. He knows fully well what's going on, and he, I mean, he's there. He's not backing up. He's not giving in. He refuses to curse God. And it's kind of like God telling the devil in chapter 1, there's no one like Job on the earth. Don't you want to be like that? Don't you want to stand out like that for Christ? Amen. Remember, anything that we do for the kingdom, that's the only thing that's going to last. Anything that we do here in this place for this world, that's not going to last. You have to believe the gospel by now. You have to be going by John 14, 6 before time runs out. So I'm not sure if you're keeping up with current events, but I'm going to go ahead and take you inside and we'll look at a couple of different videos and then we'll wrap it up for today. But pray without ceasing and stay in your Bible and we'll pick up on Job either tomorrow or the next day. We'll, we'll see what the Lord does. Remember, don't worry about tomorrow. Today has enough to worry about in itself, doesn't it? I definitely see myself in this book and Job. I'm not sure if you do, but you know we have to be willing to face any and every trial, tribulation, and test that God gives us. And if we face judgment uh, for our sins and God put, puts that on us, we should never mock Him. We should never uh, get angry at Him or question Him and say, Why this? This is so painful. Please stop. We should bow our heads and welcome it, just like He did at the cross. He took so much pain for us when He died on Calvary and you know, then they placed him in a tomb. Three days later, he came back to life. A miracle occurred. Jesus walked out alive. And he said, in order to have eternal life like he did, you have to believe that story to be true. The gospel. Gospel means truth, by the way. You have to ask him to come into your heart and save you. You have to turn away and repent of your sins daily. You have to, you have to put on the new self. And if you do those things and you believe what I just told you, your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You'll go to heaven. You'll avoid hell. But you have to believe what I just told you to be true. Jesus Christ was really on the earth. He did die for your sins. He paid all of them, not some of them.
All right, guys, let's share the screen here and we'll take a look at some additional verses for today. We've got Matthew 24, 8 here. And remember, 24, 7 says, For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. We're definitely seeing that right now. You go one verse past that to 8 and look what it says. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pains. Here's that earthquake in Florida I was telling you a couple hours from me. Check this out. It's happened in a really rare spot. You see about 90 miles off of the coast of Florida, off of the coast of Cape Canaveral. You see the magnitude right there at 1048 on Wednesday evening with that 4.0 magnitude earthquake. Now, typically, if Florida is going to feel an earthquake, it's going to be a bigger quake off towards our south and east that happens along the fault line. Florida does not sit on a fault line, but you see here, these are earthquakes over the last 12 hours, and you see where all of the seismic activity is right along the fault line. So Puerto Rico feeling a little bit of shaking. Now, these aren't big quakes. Some of these may not even have been felt, but you see where the activity is. This we got it. Florida had an earthquake. I don't remember feeling anything, uh, but again, I don't know if I was asleep or what I was doing at 1048 on Wednesday night, but uh, that's pretty rare i got to admit um not scared of it at all because we just looked at the first right here telling us it's going to happen and then also telling us this is the beginning of the birth pains at the same time guys um hawaii had a 5.7 on february 9th 306 p.m it says here is an article that i grabbed in relation to that shaking felt across the state See if we can get the video to play. I, mean, uh, you couldn't really tell what was moving, I guess, because everything was, but that was kind of the surprising part. First at four, a 5.7 magnitude earthquake strikes just off of Hawaii Island with trembles felt across the state. It struck just after 10 this morning, one and a half miles southwest of Pahala. The quake did not trigger a tsunami threat, and scientists say there's no imminent threat of an eruption. But as Mahalani Richards... Yes, there is an imminent threat of an eruption. I just showed you the verse right here. So, man, how incredible is it to be seeing these things unfold and take place in the final moments? Jesus is about to rapture his church home. It's happening, guys. Let me give you some additional verses here. Take a look at John 16, 21. Whenever a woman is in labor, she has pain because her hour has come. But when she gives birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy that a child has been born into the world. Therefore, you too have grief now, but I will see you again and your heart will rejoice and no one is going to take your joy away from you. Did you hear what I just told you? He's coming. All of the pain that you're taking right now, all the trials that you're going through right now he's in control and you're going to be rewarded look at isaiah 25 9 at what it says and it will be said on that day behold this is our god for whom we have waited that he might save us this is the lord for whom we have waited let's rejoice and be glad in his salvation he's on the way he's coming for anybody that tells me the rapture is not real it's nowhere in the bible let me tell you what it is scattered throughout the bible all you have to do is be born again and saved and it will make sense to you and ask the lord to please bless me with knowledge and wisdom and discernment and you will be able to understand his word take a look at second corinthians 5 for we know that if our earthly tent which is our house is torn down we have a building from god a house not made by hands eternal in the heavens for indeed in this tent we groan longing to be clothed with our dwelling from heaven since in fact, after putting it on, we will not be found naked. For indeed, we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, because we do not want to be unclothed, but to be clothed, so that what is mortal will be swallowed up by life. Now, he who prepared us for this very purpose as God, who gave us the Spirit as a pledge. We are going to be transformed. This old body is going to be made perfect. And we are on the way to heaven, guys. I believe the rapture to be any moment and the next thing to happen on the prophetic timeline. Let me give you one more verse and then we'll start wrapping up. I believe this is Romans 8.22. And it says, For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. Until now. And that's exactly how I feel today, guys. I hope that you believe what I'm saying to be true. And I hope you're saved.
All right, guys, there you go. I hope you enjoyed hanging out. I had a great time with that study. If you need anything, reach out to me for prayer requests by email. If the rapture isn't right now, a few moments from now, or even tonight, just do what we always say over here. Keep looking up, and we'll see you up top.